Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Wednesday, January 17th, 2023. Today, we're going to do a lot as we can in such little time. College basketball, NBA, soccer, tennis. We'll try to get the NFL mock draft in. We'll see. News and notes and best bet. College basketball, kick it off. We'll go over the results from yesterday and look ahead to today's games. Um, it was an interesting night to say the least. Number six, Tennessee over Florida, 85-66. Effort over Western Carolina, 75-71. Xavier over Butler, 85-71. Number two, Purdue at, over Indiana, 87-66. Cincinnati over number 19, TCU, 81-77 in OT. Syracuse over Pitt, 69-58. NC State over Wake, 83-76. Indiana State over Missouri State, 88-66. Bama over Missouri, 93-75. Richmond over Duquesne, 63-61. Ohio over Central Michigan, 73-61. Bowling Green over Miami of Ohio, 78-73. Akron over Western Michigan, 77-66. Ball State over Eastern Michigan, 76-62. Toledo over Buffalo, 77-66. Kansas State upsets number 9, Baylor, 68-64 in OT. Number 21, Dayton over St. Louis, 70-55. SMU over Temple, 77-64. Charlotte over Rice, 81-79 in OT. Kansas State over Northern Illinois, 83-76. Seton Hall over St. John's, 80-65. Number 3, Kansas over Oklahoma State, 90-66. Penn State upsets number 11, Wisconsin, 87-83. Number 20, BYU over number 24, Iowa State, 87-72. Georgia Tech over Clemson, 93-90. Double overtime, Georgia over South Carolina, 74-69. Arkansas over Texas A&M, 78-77. Colorado State over Air Force, 78-69 OT. Fresno over San Jose State, 85-82. Yellow V over Boise, 68-64. New Mexico over number 18, or number 16, Utah State. 99.86. Big slate today. I didn't do totals, so I'm sorry about that. Um, 6 o'clock Colgate Army. I have Colgate 5.8. And it is Colgate by 8.5 to 1.31. I'll take Army in the points. Furman VMI, I have Furman 5.3, and it's 15 half, 163.5. Oh, my God, I love VMI to cover. Georgia State, App State, 6.30. My line is App State, 8.1, and it's 9.5, 141.5. Um, over. Number 18, Creighton, number one, UConn, 7 o'clock, Fox Sports, 1. I have UConn, 4.3, and it's 5.5, 143.5. I'll go over on that one, too. So, from the clock, ESPN 2, Mississippi State, number 8, Kentucky. Mine's Kentucky, 5.3. Seven five, so five three quarters and six half one fifty four half. Ooh, um I like the under, don't feel good about it though. Um number twenty two Ole Miss L S U S C network by line is almost one point three. And it's L S U two and a half total one forty nine half. That's a Vegas nose line um over. Vautech, Virginia ESPN U my line is Virginia six point three. And it's three and a half, one twenty four and a half. I'm gonna lay to three and a half of Virginia. They are new. AC Snarek, Florida State, Miami. My line is Miami 6.3. And it's 7F, 157F. I'll go under. North Texas, East Carolina. My line is ECU 1.2. And it's North Texas 3 and one twenty five. I'll take ECU plus the points plus 146 outright. Longwood Upstate. My line is Longwood 1.4. And it's 5 and a half, 136. I'll take upstate the cover. Next up is High Point Presbyterian. My line is High Point 3.75, so 5 and 3 quarters. Or 3 and 3 quarters. 9 and a half, 151. I'll take Presbyterian the cover. Gardner Webb Radford. My line is Radford 7.8. And it's 5 and a half and 140. I'll actually lay it with Radford. Nebraska Rutgers Big Ten Eric Violence Rutgers by point six and that's two and a half and one forty two and a half will go over. Lafayette Holy Cross. My line's Holy Cross by one. And it is Lafayette four and a half to one twenty nine. I'll, I'll take Holy Cross plus the points plus a ninety. Lehigh Navy, my line's Navy two point two. And 
It's two and a half, one forty two and a half. I'll go over. Davidson Fordham. My line is Fordham five point seven. And we have two and a half, one forty one half. I'm actually gonna lay the two and a half of Fordham. We have a couple favorites tonight. Um UMass Loyola Chicago. CBS Sports Network Violence Loyola five point one. And it is two and a half, one forty six FLA with Loyola Chicago. Rhode Island St. Bonaventure minus Bonaventure six point four. And it's eight and a half, one forty two and a half. I'll take the points at Rhode Island. Bucknell BU. My line is BU six point eight. And it's four and a half, one thirty six and a half. Um I'll lay with BU. ETSU Wofford. Mine's Wofford four point nine. And three and a half, one forty eight and a half. Um I'll go over, don't feel good about it. Citadel Greensboro, my line's Greensboro. Ten and a half, that's exactly what it is, and it's one thirty two and a half as a total I'll go over. Chattanooga Mercer. My line is Mercer point four and it's Chattanooga one and a half, total one thirty eight and a half. I'm gonna go over. Youngstown State, Oakland. My line is Oakland two point one. And it's three and a half and one fifty three and a half. I'll go under. IPI Purdue Fort Wayne. My line is Purdue Fort Wayne ten point six. And it's seventeen and a half, one fifty and a half. I'll take IPI to cover. That's high. Detroit Robert Morris. My line's Robert Morris nine point eight. And it is eight and a half, one forty one and a half. I'll go over. Um, eight o'clock, West Virginia, number fifteen, Oklahoma, minus Oklahoma, six point three, and it's eleven half, one forty four half. I'll take West Virginia to cover, although this screams letdown spot for the Mountaineers. UCF, Texas, my line's Texas, eight point one, and Texas is giving eight and a half to one three and a half. I'll go over. Tulane UAB minus UAB 2.2, and it's 1.5, 164 and a half on there. That's way too high. UTSA Tulsa minus Tulsa 4.9, and it's 6.5 and, and 154 and a half. I'll take the under. Marie State UIC minus Marie State 7 tenths, and it's or Illinois Chicago 1.5, total 138 and a half. Um, I'll go Marie State plus the points and minus 105. Bradley Southern Illinois really lights Bradley by a half and it's two and a half one thirty three and a half. I'll take Southern the points at plus one sixteen. Drake Illinois State. My line is Drake seven point seven and it's seven and a half one three eight and a half. I'll go over. Valpo Evansville lines Evansville eight point seven and. It is five and a half and one forty one half. I'll lay the points at Evansville. Louisiana and Texas State. My line is Louisiana by one and it's Texas State by one half total one thirty five and a half. I'm gonna take Louisiana plus one half and minus one oh five outright. Arkansas Southern Miss my line Southern is six point two and it's Arkansas State one half. Total 150 and a half. I'll take Southern Miss plus the one half and it's minus 110. So it's kind of a pick 'em. 9 o'clock, ACC Arc, Louisville, number 4, North Carolina, minus North Carolina 14.3. And it's 20 and a half, 154 and a half. I think Louisville covers. Maybe UNC wins by 18. Um, number 25, Texas Tech, number 8, Houston, or number 5, Houston on ESPNU. My line is. Houston by three and it's twelve and a half, one twenty nine. I love Texas Tech the cover, love it. Number thirteen Auburn Van the SEC Narc lines, Auburn by eight. And it's twelve and a half, one forty eight and a half. I'll take Vandy to cover. 
Pac-12 Network, UCLA, Arizona State, Arizona State 5.1. And it's 3.5 and 129. And I'll take the over. Northern Iowa, Belmont, CBS Sports Network wins Belmont 2.7. And it's 1.5 and 150. And I'll go with the over. Big Ten Network, Maryland, Northwestern wins Northwestern 3.1. And it's 3.5 and 128. I'll go over. Fox Sports 1, Providence, DePaul. Mine's Providence 2.75, so 2 and 3 quarters. And it's 8.5, 138. I'll take DePaul to cover. That's high. 10 o'clock, ESPN USA, number 12, Arizona. My line is Zona 7.4. And it's 19.5, total 159. I'll take SC to cover. That's way too many points. No Collier is a big deal, so I should make that line higher. But I still take FC to cover, even with Collier's absence. Um, and 11 o'clock, CBS Sports Arc, Nevada, San Diego State, my line, San Diego State, 4.5, and it's 6.5, 1.40. I'll take Nevada to cover. Now move on to the NBA. Um, we'll go over the small window. Tonight's games, um, Sixers over the Nuggets, 126-121. Suns over the Kings, 119-117. And the Clippers over the Thunder, 128-117. So best bet loses, but they best bet should have won. Paul George just went on a heater at the end of that game. All right, 7 o'clock, T-Wolves, Pistons, my lanes. T-Wolves by 13, total 227 and a fifth, two fifths. And it is... 11.5 and 224. I like the over. 7.30 Magic Hawks. My line is the Hawks 4.5 total 234 and a fifth or in a tenth. And it's 3.5 and 232. Over. He went picking the over in a ma- in a Magic Hawks game. Spurs Celtics. My Celtics by a whopping 24 total 232 and 1920. And it is 16 and 237. I'm laying the points with the Celtics. ESPN, Bucks, Cavs. My line's Bucks, 6 and a half, total 234 and 7 and 20 at the end. It is 4 and 236 and a half. Um, so I have a 2 and a half point edge on the Bucks. And I have a little over 2 on the under. So I'm going to lay the 4 with the Bucks on the road. Don't feel good about it, though. Rockets, Knicks. My line's Knicks, 9 and 3 quarters, so 225 and 920. And it is 5 and 218 and a half. Over. Heat, Raptors. My line is the Heat by 1 and 3 quarters, so 227 and 320. And it's 2 and a half and 226 and a half. So very close. Um, it's like 3 quarters edge on the Raps. And I'm trying to do the math here. Yeah, I'll take the Raptors plus the points. Slightly in there. Hornets, Pelicans, my last Pelicans, 16 and a half, total 228 and 920. It's ended is 12 and a half and 228 and a half. I'm laying the 12 and a half at New Orleans. 830, ABC, Mavs, Lakers, Mike Breen, Doris Burke, on and Doc Rivers on the call. You would think. Um, my line is the Lakers five and three quarters, so two three two and seven, or in three quarters, and it's three and a half and two forty two. I like the under a lot, although I would lay it with the Lakers too. Under's the better play. Nine o'clock Warriors Jazz. My line is the Jazz two and a half total two thirty five and a fifth, and it is four and a half and two forty two under. And last but not least. 10 o'clock, Nets Blazers. My line is the Nets, one and a quarter, so 227 and a fifth. And it's six and 223 and a half. I'm going to take the Blazers plus the six to cover. All right, the NHL. We'll go over the results from yesterday and look ahead to tonight's slate, which is small. Abs over to Sens, 7-4. Caps over to Ducks, 2-0. Rangers over to Kraken, 5-2. Stars over to Kings, 5-1. Jets over to Isles, 4-2. 
Blackhawks over the Sharks, 2-1 shootout. Flames over the Coyotes, 3-2 OT. Oilers over the Leafs, 4-2. 7 o'clock tonight, Red Wings, Panthers. Um, Panthers minus 15, Red Wings plus 176, over under 6.5, overs minus 172, under is even money. Detroit plus 1.5 is minus 130, Panthers minus 1.5 is plus 108. This is a hard one, but... I'm going to go lay the puck line with the Panthers so you don't feel good about it, though. Habs, Devils. Devils minus 184. Habs plus 152. Over under 6 and a half. Overs minus 8. Others minus 112. Habs plus 1 half is minus 152. Devils minus 1 half is plus 126. I like the over. And 730 TNT, Blackhawks, Sabres. Um, they probably should have aired Red Wings, Panthers. That's the best game on the board. But this game was chosen because of Darlene versus Bedard, but Bedard's out. Sabres minus two eighty five, Blackhawks plus two thirty over under six and a half. Overs plus one eight, unders minus one thirty two. Blackhawks plus one half is minus one two. Sabres minus one half is minus one eighteen. I take a Chicago to cover to one and a half. That um, I don't trust the Sabres to, to win by multiple goals. All right, now I'll move on to soccer. Um, we'll go over the results. From yesterday and look ahead to today. We'll start with Spanish Copa del Rey. Sevilla over Getafe 3 1. Athletic over Alaves 2 0. And Mallorca over Tenerife 1 0. In additional extra time. 2 o'clock today, Valencia and Celta Vigo. Um. Just going to pull it up real quick. Valencia plus 110. Celta Vigo plus 250. Draw plus 210. I'm going with Valencia plus 110. They're hot. 3 o'clock. Osasuna and Real Sociedad. Real Sociedad plus 130. Osasuna plus 240. Draw plus 185. I don't feel good about it, but I'm going to draw plus 185. In 3-3, Girona, Rayo. Girona minus 160. Rayo, 4-1. to The draw is plus 290. Under two and a half goals, minus one weight, but I don't feel good about it. The English FA Cup. Um, Wolves over Brentford, 3-2 in additional extra time. Birmingham over Hull, 2-1. Newport over Eastley, 3-1. Bristol City over West Ham, 1-0. Luton over Bolton, 2-1. Only three games today for the third round. Um, 2.45, you have Bristol Rovers in Norwich City. Um, Norwich plus 135, Rovers plus 170, draw plus 270. Um, I'm gonna go with the draw plus 270. Everton Crystal Palace, Everton minus 105, Crystal Palace plus 290, draw plus 230. I'm going with Everton minus 105, and then Blackpool, Nottingham Forest. Nottingham minus 105, Blackpool plus 250, draw plus 250. I'm going to go with the draw here at plus 250. Asian Cup um, yesterday, Thailand over um, Kyger's Republic 2-0 and Saudi Arabia over Oman 2-1. Right now, Lebanon and China 0-0. In the 80th minute, as we're recording, and at 9.30, you have um, Tajikistan and, and Qatar. Um, at 9.30, Qatar's favor, minus 310. Tajikistan is 7 to 1, the draws plus 380. I'm going with under two and a half goals at plus 104. Africa Cup of Nations. Um, yesterday's result: Burkina Faso over Mauritania one nil. Namibia over Tunisia one nil, and Mali over South Africa two nil. Um, twelve o'clock. You have Morocco and Tanzania. 
Um, Morocco minus five fifty. Tanzania is fourteen to one. The draws plus four forty. We're gonna go over two and a half goals minus one hundred two. And three o'clock Congo DR in Zambia. Um, Congo plus one sixty five. Zambia plus one eighty five. Draw plus one seventy five. I like the draw plus one seventy five. Liga MX, tonight, 8 o'clock, you have Leon and Tigres. So that is an interesting game. Leon, plus 145, Tigres, plus 175, the draw is plus 220. I'm going to go with Leon at home at plus 145. Okay, now move on to tennis, um, second round of the Australian Open. Is underway. Um, we will go over those results for you. Um, so I just have to, uh, Pull them up real quick. I'm sorry about that. Um, so just hang on one second with me. Um, All right, so second round results. Tensi Alex Demeanor over Mateo Arnaldi in three sets. Fourth seed Janik Center over Jasper De Jong in three sets. Two seed Carlos Alcaraz Garfia over Richard Gasset in three sets. Lorenzo Sinego over Dan Evans in four sets. Six seed. I oh, guess first round, Alexander Zverev, Dominic Kofor. So, a couple of those I just went over were first round results that we already did. And then overnight, um, Wensi Novak Djokovic over Alexei Paparin in four sets. 5 seed Andre Rublev over Chrissy Banks in three sets. 29 seed Sebastian Corda over Quinn Haley's in three sets. 7 seed Stefano Sipius over Jordan Thompson in four sets. 30 seed Thomas Echeverry over Gail Moffles in Three sets. Thomas Machak over 17 seed Francis Tiafo in three sets. 20 seed Adrian Manorino over Hamai Munar in five sets. 16 seed Ben Shelton over Chris O'Connell in four sets. Fabian Marzoran over 22 seed Francisco Serendulo in three sets. 12 seed Taylor Fritz over Hugo Gaston in three sets. All right. Tonight, into overnight, um, Alex Michelson and Jiri Lacheco, your 32 seed, 90 seed Cam Nori and Guglio Zaperi, 6 seed Alexander Zverev and Lucas Klein, 11 seed Casper Ruud and Max Purcell, 14 seed jo- Tommy Paul and Jack Draper, Mimor Kekpovic and 24 seed Jen Strutt, um, Nuno Borges and 23 seed Alejandro Davidich Fokina, Lorenzo Cindy. Sinead going to see Carlos Alcaraz. Sumit Najal and Shang Jun Chang. 21 seed Hugo Humbert and Zizi Zong. Arthur Phils and 20 seed Talon Griegspor. Jacob Mensik and 9 seed Hubert Hurtkaz. And 27 seed Felix Algarasalame and Hugo Greener. And an overnight to finish the men's second round. 13 seed Grigor Dimitrov and Thanasi Kakianis. Um, 3 seed Daniel Mavedev and Emil Rusevori. And 8 seed Holger Rune and Arthur Kazo. 
All right, the women's. Um, from yesterday, second round. And then we'll um go over um today into tomorrow. Um second round. Ten seed Beatrice Haddad Maya over Alina Corniva in two sets. Four seed Coco Golf over Caroline Delide in two sets. Um Diane Parry over Camilla Rakamova in two sets. Um Alicia Parks upsets three two seed Layla Fernandez in two sets. Amanda Anisimova over Nadia Podoroska in two sets. 19, Barbara Krejcikova over Tamara Korpach in two sets. Storm Hunter over Laura Siegman in three sets. Mira Andreeva upset 16, Ons Jabor in two sets. Maria Timofeeva over Caroline Wozniaski in three sets. 5, 2, Jessica Pagula over Rebecca Marino in two sets. Okay, that was first round. Um, and then overnight tonight, or last night, I mean, um, Marta Kosberg upsets 25 seed Elise Mertens in three sets. 20 seed Lizia Serenko over Rebecca Masarova in, in two sets. 2 seed Marina Sablenka over Brenda Furitova in two sets. Paula Bedosa over Anastasia Pavlajakova in two sets. Magdalena Fretch over 16 seed Caroline Garcia in two sets. And Anastasia Zakharova over Kaja Juvan in two sets. Going on right now, 18, Maria Sakari and Lena Avansayan. All right, tonight, um, Aratoxa Rus and Anna Kalinskaya. Um, McCartney Kessler and Linda Niskova. Once he gets Swiatek and Daniel Collins. O'Shane Doden and Martina Trevisan. Tajana Maria in 26 seed Jasmine Paolini. Solani Stevens in 40 seed Daria Casacchina. 12 seed Quinn Zhang and Katie Bolter. Clara Burrell in 5 seed Jessica Pagula. 27 seed Evan Navarro and Elizabeth Cacciaretto. Emma Rakandu and Yifan Wang. Kenrina Siniakova and Victoria Golubuk. 19 seed Alina Svitolina and Victoria Tomanova. Farvera Gracheva and Diana Yastremka. And then overnight tonight, um, 11 seed Jelena Ostapenko and Alja Tomjevic. 3 seed Alina Rabikina and Anna Blinkova. Clara Tawson and 18 seed Victoria Azarenka. Then we have some third round matches set up for you. Um, we'll get into those on tomorrow's podcast. Okay, the first NFL mock draft of the year. We have time for it, but we'll squeeze it in. Um. So, back to the mock drafts. We'll do one a week up until the draft. So, without further ado, here we go. All right, number one, the Chicago Bears from the Carolina Panthers. Caleb Williams, quarterback, USC. The Bears' decision on what to do with the first overall pick will be among the biggest of the offseason. Either way, Williams will go first, whether it's for the Bears or another team. He did not have his best season this past year, but his playmaking ability is what could make him special. Two seed, the Washington Commanders, Drake May, quarterback, North Carolina. The Commanders know that Sam Howell is not the long term answer, so May should be the pick. There are some people in the media that feel that May could go first overall due to his arm strength, size, and mobility. Three to New England Patriots, Marvin Harrison Jr., wide receiver, Ohio State. Personally, the Patriots should go quarterback here and would be an ideal trade partner for the Bears so they can keep Justin Fields and draft Harrison. So the Pats can take a quarterback. Harrison has best wideout prospects since Calvin Johnson and is a nightmare for defenses to his um, size and athleticism. Number four, the Arizona Cardinals. Malik Neighbors, wide receiver, LSU. The Cardinals seem committed to Kyler Murray for next season, so the move should be 
a playmaker, an offensive lineman. Neighbors is known to have um, the big knack play, a lot of yards, um, something that the Cardinals offense needs, a big play guy that can get a lot of yards. Number five, Los Angeles Chargers, Brock Bowers, tight end Georgia. This match makes the most sense among teams that aren't looking for a quarterback. The Browns would instantly, or Bowers would instantly make the Chargers offense already good on paper better. And he's a much needed security blanket for Justin Herbert considering how injury prone those skill position guys are. Number six, the New York Giants. Ole Fashano, offensive tackle, Penn State. The Giants are another team that should consider a quarterback here, considering Daniel Jones is not worth the contract he got. Fashano here is admitting defeat on Evan Neal, but he's an upgrade over Neal and would be good along with Andrew Thomas protecting whoever's the quarterback. Seven, the Tennessee Titans. Joel, offensive tackle, Notre Dame. The Titans look like a team that's headed for a major rebuild with the team getting rid of Mike Rabel along with some players that were a part of Rabel's success with the team. Alt is super consistent, and he and Peter Skronsky will be blocking from whoever's quarterback for a long time. Eight, the Atlanta Falcons. Jaden Daniels, quarterback, LSU. The Falcons would be ecstatic if Daniels followed them at eight, but I think the team wants to win right away with a veteran. Daniels was perhaps the most electric quarterback in the country with his speed, and he should be picked higher than this. Number nine, the Chicago Bears. Dallas Turner, edge rusher, Alabama. The Bears should consider wide receiver here to go with um, Fields or Caleb Williams. But they can also use someone opposite Montez Sweat on their pass rush. Turner has great speed and athleticism, and he could also stop the run. Ten, the New York Jets. Romeo Odunze, wide receiver, Washington. The Jets are under immense pressure to make a win-now selection with Aaron Rodgers returning from his Achilles injury. Odunte is somebody with the speed and size and has ability to play through contact. He would be a good duo with Garrett Wilson. 11. The Minnesota Vikings. Layatu Latu, edge rusher, UCLA. The Vikings could be in play for a quarterback if... Kirk Cousins leaves as a free agent, but Latu makes sense here with their defense needing pass rushers. Latu is a fast player, but his attacking abilities make him stand out. 12, the Denver Broncos. Terry on Arnold, cornerback, Alabama. The Broncos may be another team that can be in play for a quarterback, but their defense has several holes. Arnold is not known for discipline, but he has excellent ball production and super athletic. 13, the Las Vegas Raiders. Nate Wiggins, cornerback, Clemson. The Raiders are in a similar spot as the Broncos in terms of the need for a long-term quarterback, but also need help on the defensive side of the ball. Wiggins has excellent length and is patient in pass coverage. 14, the New Orleans Saints. J.C. Latham, offensive tackle, Alabama. The Saints are in an interesting position come the draft. Latham is a versatile offensive lineman and is one of the more stronger players in the draft. But more importantly, the Saints need more help at the line to protect Derek Carr or whomever's at quarterback. 15, the Indianapolis Colts. Chloe McKinstry, cornerback, Alabama. The Colts came oh so close to making the postseason and changed seconds first year. The secondary is probably the biggest weakness on the team, and McKinstry has the length of physicality that teams like. 16, the Seattle Seahawks. Jared Verse, edge rush, Florida State. The Seahawks' pass rush has been their biggest weakness for years now versus a plug-and-play pass rusher who is athletic, always aware, and super explosive to make his presence felt on opposing offensive lines. 17, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Keon Coleman, wide receiver, Florida State. The Jaguars have major needs in other areas, but they take the sexy pick here with Coleman. He provides elite size and frame as well as his speed and ability to make adjustments on the fly. 18, the Cincinnati Bengals. Talisi Flaga, offensive tackle at Oregon State. The Bengals need to protect Joe Burrow at all costs when he returns from injury, and Flaga makes sense. He's a strong player and the perfect plug and play on the offensive line for a team that desperately needs it. 19, Los Angeles Rams. 
Amarius Mims, offensive tackle, Georgia. The Rams offensive line was somewhat exposed in their wild card loss in the trade, so getting young on that side of the line makes sense. Mims has a massive frame with mass and length and excels in pass protection. 20 to Pittsburgh Steelers. Cooper DeWan, quarter, cornerback, Iowa. The Steelers have some larger areas of need, but DeWan makes sense. Um, he's super athletic and has rare mass and frame ability for a cornerback. And the idea of him, Joey Porter, and Minka Fitzpatrick in the same secondary is scary. 21, the Miami Dolphins. Jackson Powers Johnson. Interior offensive lineman, Oregon. The Dolphins are a super top-heavy team with guys that are injury-prone. Powers Johnson is a versatile player that has a great stance and footwork, which helps his blocking ability. 22, the Philadelphia Eagles. Quinion Mitchell, cornerback, Toledo. The Eagles are a team that has a lot of questions going forward after their late-season collapse. Mitchell, despite coming from a conference that flies under the radar, is super aggressive with his moves and has good size. 23 to Houston Texans from the Cleveland Browns. Jerzon Newton, defensive line, Illinois. The Texans are doing backflips with C.J. Stroud, but they need more around him and on the other side of the ball to get to that next level. Newton has good size and technique and has alignment versatility. 24 to Dallas Cowboys. Tyler Newman, safety, Oklahoma. After that disastrous loss against the Packers, the Cowboys obviously need help in their secondary, Newbin, maybe somebody that could go lower than this. But he is someone that's always aware of his surroundings and is good at tracking the ball. 25, the Green Bay Packers. Trey Fatano, offensive line, Washington. The Packers have to be proud of what they've accomplished with Jordan Love this season. Fatano makes sense here, though, with his versatility and with David Bakhtiari getting older. And seeming to be injured a lot. 26 is Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Brian Thomas Jr., wide receiver, LSU. Assuming Baker Mayfield is back, this pick makes a lot of sense for the Bucs. With Mike Evans' feature with, with the team in doubt, they would need someone at that position. And Thomas is somebody that has the length and his elusiveness to succeed. Number 27, the he- Arizona Cardinals from the Houston Texans. Kingsley... Suamadia, offensive tackle, BYU. Coming out of the first round with a wide receiver and an offensive lineman is a win for the franchise. Suamadia has the footwork technique and has the length to be impactful. 28, the Kansas City Chiefs. Adonai Mitchell, wide receiver, Texas. The Chiefs' need for a good wide receiver is the most obvious need among teams that can win the Super Bowl. Mitchell is someone... That is super explosive with his speed and ability to get down the field, but does not provide breakaway speed. 29, the Buffalo Bills. Tyler Guyton, offensive tackle, Oklahoma. The Bills are a team that doesn't have many needs, but going offensive line here makes sense. Guyton is someone that is a work in progress, but he has great physical traits and is effective when asked to pull. 30, the Detroit Lions. Braylon Trice, edge rush, Washington. The Lions' defense has been one of the worst among teams remaining in the postseason, and they have been exposed on all accounts. Trice would be great to go with Aiden Hutchinson with his speed, hands, and length. 31, the San Francisco 49ers. Graham Barton, interior offensive line, Duke. The Niners are a team that is great in a lot of areas to the point they don't have an obvious need. Interior offensive line could be realistic here with Barton, who has good football IQ. Good hand placement, but he doesn't consistently dominate. 32, the Baltimore Ravens. Jordan Morgan, offensive line, Arizona. The Ravens are another team that doesn't have that obvious need. It never hurts to go offensive line, and Morgan makes sense here with his versatility. And he's well-balanced and physical in all aspects. Okay, so there we have it for the first NFL mock draft. Now I move on to the news and notes for today. Um, Joel Embiid said something really classy after the game. He says Nikola Jokic is the best in the NBA. Um, He says nothing but respect for the finals MVP. 
But the big story that came out last night, um, the Raptors and the Pacers are in active talks for a deal including three first-round picks for Pascal Siakam and Bruce Brown going back to Toronto as well. Um, That would be an interesting fit with um, Siakam and Halliburton and, of course, Miles Turner. So I don't know how Siakam and Turner would fit together, but I don't hate the trade, and I would applaud Indiana for going for it with their young franchise point guard in Halliburton. Um, bad news for the Clippers. Vitra Zubak out for weeks due to a calf strain. Um, he'll be missed. Here's some disturbing news. Um, MSG Executive Chairman James Dolan um, had a lawsuit filed against him as a woman says he pressured her into unwanted sex and sex traffic in 2013. Yikes. And um, one of Dolan's um, other guys were apparently involved in this. As well, but allegations don't always turn out to be true. But if this is true, this is a big deal and could be a distraction to the two teams he has that are both playing very well right now in their respective sports. So um, for the sake of the Knicks and for the sake of the Rangers, they better hope that um, these are not true. And um, sometimes these people... It pains me to say this, but, like, I don't know. Sometimes these don't always turn out to be true, and um, sometimes people are just looking for attention and obviously uh, more than that. But we'll see what happens. And James Dolan hasn't had, like, a dumb James Dolan moment in a while. And I mean a long time. So we were due for one. So this obviously is um, one that came up. But like I said, there's a chance it's not true. Um, the Knicks are fielding offers for Quentin Grimes as he's actively included in trade talks. I think there's a better possibility he's in a package for somebody than him getting dealt for, like, a pick or something. So some NFL stuff. Um, The Falcons interviewed Jim Harbaugh for its head coaching job after they interviewed Bill Belichick. How about this? Bill Belichick wants a project as he's interested in talented yet underachieving teams. Sounds like Dallas and the Chargers to me. Mike Tomlin is not leaving the Steelers as he intends to return for his 18th year as Steelers head coach. That's not surprising. He's one year left on his deal. When he stormed out of the press conference, I know he was just having a bad day, bad moment. And obviously didn't want to hear it. Um, fans were throwing popcorn at Nick Sirianni during the game after the loss. Which wasn't nice. Um, So, EA Sports denies the college football rumors as much anticipated video game does not have release date amid July 12th rumors. How does Jim Harbaugh is seeking immunity as he wants protection from potential NCAA penalties amid contract talks? Um, Tola Tonga Vailoa to enter the draft. Um, he might be a day three pick. Promised for sure. USC commit five star quarterback Julian Lewis reclassifies 2025 as he'll consider offers from Bama, Georgia, 
Michigan and others. Um, so Swanson sides with the Chicago Red Stars for the highest paid player in the National Women's Soccer League. Um, so the Lightning general manager makes it clear that Steven Stamkos will not be moved to the trade deadline ahead of free agency coming up. Astros reliever Kendall Graveman out for the year as he underwent right shoulder surgery the other day. That's not great for Houston. Marcus Stroman pens a letter thanking the Cubs and um, is looking forward to uh, pitching for the Yankees. All right, last but not least, my best bet of the day brought to you by FanDuel. Um, there's one in college basketball I like. I'm not going to lay a lot on it because yesterday's loss, and I loved the Thunder yesterday. Um, I'm going to lay a tenth of a unit on this one only. It's in college basketball. I just think Houston's giving too many points. I like Tech to cover. Um, it's 12 and a half. Um, Tech to Tech's ranked. I know what you're saying. Like, really, you're betting on a newly ranked team. But that number's too high. And Houston's really good. Don't get me wrong. But just a high number. I'm taking Tech plus 12 and a half against Houston. All right, so that's it for the show. I'll be back. Tomorrow, recapping everything and looking ahead to everything tomorrow as well. And I will have a golf pick for you as well. Have a great day, everyone.